The underlying uh, idea of this talk it used to be called combination remedies. Now we're more sophisticated and we call it the periodic table and the anions and the cations and the... Uh, but of course it's really about combination remedies. And it's also true that um, our uh, understanding of combination remedies has become more sophisticated. And so we can sort of place it in somewhat different contexts, try and look at it from uh, different angles. This part of the, the talk is on those elements on the right-hand side of the periodic table. These guys here. Carbon, silicon, nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, oxygen, sulfur, and the halogen series. The main focus is the possibility of combination of elements. And the relative contribution that each element makes to the final picture. And so the combination of elements implies, of course, a relationship. And so this idea of salts as archetypes of relationship is very important in this respect. And so I would like just, just in a moment to touch on that what is the important thing about this need for a relationship between the animals or the minerals or the plants? What's, what's the sort of signature of each of these? So in the animals, relationship is very important. Yes, I mean, you see, it's like Fundamentally, for us, relationship is important. But their relationship is important in which way? The game, yes. These are subtle things, but it's not so much in the having of it, it's in the getting of it. Yes, where the, the tremendous emphasis, where the center of gravity sort of lies. See, whereas in the mineral, it's more in the having of it, not so much in the getting of it. And in plants, it's almost like the difficulty of it. It's, it's a little, because plants are very sensitive. And at the same time, because of their sensitivity, they tend to feel a little isolated. Um, and so it's as if relationships, it's not the breaking of them, it's not so much the finding of them, it's the, the pain inside of them. So this relationship between The cations between the actively charged ones and the anions and the negatively charged ones. There's the question of which one is the dominant partner and what contributions or modifications are brought about by the secondary partner. And speaking in general, of course, it's the cations, it's the positive side, which are the dominant partners, and the anions, which bring about the modification. And this modification to the picture of the cation. So you, it's everybody you follow what I'm sort of saying even though I'm using these words so the cation is like calcarea. Calcarea has its 
sort of picture, its individuality, its expression. And this expression is modified by its relationship. And it can be modified either in its physical characteristics or in its emotional characteristics or both. Also, one, one kind of note, which is helpful, important, is that the cation preponderance, in other words, where the active one, the calcarea, the cali, is the strongest, the most pure, the remedies tend to be chili. Chili, yes. And the carbonates, the carbon, which is the anion, produces the least modification of the cation. So you'll see often the, the sort of most pure expression of the cation is in the carbonate, calcarea carbonica, cali carbonica. Not necessarily the most common. So for instance, in the natrums, we take natrum muriaticum as being the sort of archetype of the natrums, but it probably isn't so. It's probably natrum carbonicum, except we're much more familiar with natrum muriaticum because it occurs more commonly. So in the burritas, of course, burrita carbonicum is the sort of archetype, but it may not be the most commonly occurring one in our time, according to the people we see, according to the pressures of society. The halogens are... Um, I think there, there, there are reasons why they're sort of common in terms of the combinations. And somehow the halogens are uh, um, primal substances. That column is the most coherent of all the columns, of all the vertical lines in the periodic table. You can see Jan Schulten has tried to make a coherence of the vertical lines in the periodic table. And it's a question about the degree of success there. The horizontal lines are much easier to see their pattern, in a way. Um, you can see the first line of metals, the second, the third. They carry, uh, because of their increasing density, because of the nature, it's, these vertical lines, it's harder to see the thread that runs through, except the halogens. You can see clearly they're all joined by this element of um, bitterness, betrayal, anger. The only one which is a little tricky in respect to that, of course, is what? Fluoric acid. Huh? Fluoric acid doesn't have quite the same anger. anger, the same edge to it. Fluoric acid does actually not feel um, trade in some the others for instance the chloride okay. the betrayal there is what you could say in a way you broke my heart you broke my heart and I am sort of bitter about it <laughs> in some way. The bromine is, takes another 
sort of level. And there, it's not, it's not quite you broke my heart, but you are a danger to me, actually. You're out to get me. I'm afraid around you because of your violence, your anger, your, the fact that you have singled me out, which is so beautifully expressed in Heli Romatum, singled out for divine vengeance. And it's, I think, Caleb Romatum's probably touches on the story of Job. Yes, because Job was a good man. Uh, he was an honest, good, upright citizen. And everything bad happened to him. How can one understand this? Uh, except that somehow God has not only turned his back, uh, but has actively <laughs> singled him out. Yes. And then the iodine comes even after that. So the iodine has not only sort of the uh, danger and the betrayal, but it's deeper betrayed. It's stabbed in the back. 